Hey everybody, Morris here, resident bard of Blind Sense Podcast. Hey, did you forget something this year? Yeah, you did. To email the podcast like I've been telling you to do over and over again. But maybe you haven't been listening to me because I saved that for the end of the video. Well, now we're doing a video just about how you need to email the podcast. Mike agreed to it. I'm doing it. You're going to email us. Do it for Mike. Do it for me. Do it because here's a list of all the crazy shit I've been asking you to talk about. Hey kids, did you make it through the episode? Good. Now here's what you need to do. Email Mike at volantrix at gmail.com. That's volantrix, spelled V-A-L-A-N-T-R-I-X. Give us a question for our next audio-only episode. It's coming up, and then if it passes... You didn't ask us a question, and we could have talked about that question. You, you regret it, maybe. Just, just do it, please. All right, bye. You can also give us something more to talk about next time, like how we skipped over Krampus even though he's in Bestiary 6, and I was all like, hey, Mike, we need to go back and talk about Krampus because people really care about him. He's popular right now. And Mike's like, I'm sick of Krampus, Morris. We're not discussing that. Leave the podcast the way it is. What's up with that, Mike? Kids, email Mike with all your outrage that we didn't discuss Krampus to volantrix at gmail.com. That's volantrix, spelled V-A-L-A-N-T-R-I-X. Hey, kids. Did you make it through all of that episode, too? Good. I'm glad. Now here's what you need to do. Email some questions to Mike at Volantrix at gmail.com. That's Volantrix, spelled V-A-L-A-N-T-R-I-X. You know, like, hit us with something, I don't know, like, um... Oh, if you could have a superpower, like, and you only get one, what would that superpower be? Like... I, I know a lot of people would fly or levitate stuff, but like I'd go with pyrokinesis because then you can set things on fire, but like you don't even have to get too close. So like there's things and, and people that I'd just be like, ha 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 ha, burn you fools. Burn while I stand over here and enjoy my plausible deniability. Ha ha. So... Folks at home, you may enjoy this as much as I do. Um, the guy who plays Lombard, um, yeah, that'd oh, be great. Oh, yeah. He's Captain that. Nathan Gideon on Crusade. It's amazing. And a story that my friend Craig has told me that I don't know whether or not it's true, but it makes a good story either way. It's supposedly in office space, the college ring that he is wearing is allegedly actually... The captain's ring from Crusade. <laughs> oh, really? Oh. I don't know if that's true, but that's an awesome story. I wish I could way. see because I'd probably compare it. Yeah. <laughs> hey, kids. Um, there seems to be a problem. Is um, you're you're not putting the new cover letter on our TPS reports. You do know that we are using a, a new letterhead on the TPS reports, right? Okay, so if you could uh, go ahead and do that from now on and uh, email Mike at volantrix at gmail.com spelled V-A-L-A-N-T-R-I-X That'd be great. All right, uh, good talk. We'll see you later. So I'm, I got a nerd out again. I'm sorry, folks, if I'm getting off topic too far again for you. It's all but, good. Um, did you out. did you see the whole thing where they had to go into uh, the Kessel Run being only twelve parsecs, and they're like, "That's a unit of measurement. It's not a unit of time." And then some wily motherfucker went in and was like, <laughs> "No, you see, yeah. they plot the course and they do multiple jumps, and the Millennium Falcon did less jumps than the other ships, and that's how it won." 
Which, if if you really want to explain it that recently, you have a problem. Yeah. But yeah. Hey. Just maybe? accept it the way it is. It's a different dude, world. It's different terminology. Just use it dude, that Dude, I can, I can accept he's just a writer. He messed up. But I have a degree of respect for the fans who are like, oh, I I'm, I'm going to go that. in and I'm going to find a way to make this work. To make it make sense. That's cool. But except, yeah. except, except you guys who are fans of Star Trek and want to make transported technology a reality, you need to be stopped. It's, that's... Again, I'm going the on a... Heisenberg Compensator, Morris! <laughs> Screw Heisenberg Compensator, man! They're still destroying you physically in one place and creating a clone of you in the other place. That's not you. That's I not you. I agree with Dr. McCoy on that point, yes. In the first movie, and then he uses it in subsequent movies. <laughs> I agree with what you. What the I hell, really McCoy? Do. What the hell? But yeah, I, I couldn't not geek out about that too where it's like that technology if you really think about it destroying yourself and then being cloned somewhere else that's horrifying you are a sick individual if you voluntarily use that tech scares the shit out of me dude let me tell you <laughs> I've got a horror I've got a horror story in particular that like I've got the the base treatment in my head I'm gonna work on that I, I think that'll be really good um but yeah, no let's... matter what you say, it's not safe. That's all I'm saying. Uh, I don't trust that at all. And especially no. if you folks go back after watching all the good Star Trek films and you go back and watch the, the first motion picture attempt, they actually address how horrible that can go wrong if they screw mm. something up. See? <laughs> yeah, no thanks. Yeah, okay. the the line. We probably should digress from that. Yes, fun, absolutely. Yeah. But I will just say that the line "What we got back didn't last very long" still haunts me. Don't do it, Scotty. It'll make you a murderer. Like again for the eight billionth and thousand, a lot of times. Don't do it, kids. Email Mike at Lantrix at gmail dot com. Hey, kids. Did you enjoy the video in this podcast or? Was it kind of wasted my time to put video in? Uh, let us know either in the comments or at Volantrix at gmail.com. Volantrix is spelled V-A-L-A-N-T-R-I-X. You know, you can let us know about that because we do want feedback from you guys. Um, or if that doesn't suit, like I've got a brain teaser for you this time around. So let's say we've got one of these dumb refrigerators that we keep making in the 21st century. You know, with like Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and it can tell you when to reorder milk. Yeah, nobody seems to be able to tell me why we need these refrigerators in the first place. But, okay, you've got one of these refrigerators and you're in Shadowrun. And somehow through a turn of events, like a mega corporation was trying to get a hold of an AI that's gone rogue. And like it's in this refrigerator. Don't ask me why. I mean, like maybe the the compression on refrigerator hard drives are super good i don't know but like they've chased the ai into this refrigerator and they've cut it off from the network and they're going to destroy it does that constitute murder to kill a sentient ai on a refrigerator and uh like what if something happened that was really dumb like i don't know some socially backward orc or a troll or something was like in love with the ai on the fridge because it was the only thing that was ever nice to him or something and like is hiring you to save his loved one if you fail would that be like letting somebody die uh let us know philantrix at gmail.com i'm super sure mike will be very happy with me for starting that conversation okay talk to you later kids bye there's crazy stuff in the end, like I've been asking you questions this whole time, freaking write Mike an email or comment or both, preferably, because we really the goofier it is the better. That's fine we, with me. We really cause... do want to talk about sentient refrigerators. Was my last one, or you know, Scott? Why does your toaster want to, Why does my toaster want to eat me? That's fine too. So yeah. this is one of the things that we had to cut out, unfortunately, because it just was bad quality there. But it's like. 
how bad would that be? That that's something that's totally within the purview uh, of. Um, oh, late. My mind's going. Help me, Mike. What's the other system that we like? Um, oh, Shadowrun. Shadowrun. Thank you. <laughs> that's really sad. But yeah, Shadowrun. It would totally be within the purview of that. That like your girlfriend's pissed at you, so she hacks into the toaster and downloads a copy of her consciousness in it that's, like, just passively, aggressively burning Burns all your, your toast. Your egos and your toast are always being burnt. It's, it's like, why, why you always got to be right, honey? <laughs> hey, kids, would, would you let that toast thing slide? Because I probably wouldn't. I think it would progress, you know? First off, she's burning my toast, and then she's burning my egos, and... And the next thing you know, she's she's really trying to hurt me. She's burning my toaster strudel just for the sheer satisfaction of not letting me eat it. I mean, how did it get this bad? Why are we like this now? Could you live with that? Email your answer to Volantrix at gmail.com. That's Volantrix spelled V-A-L-A-N-T-R. I X. I mean, why would she do that to me? What kind of monster was I dating?